Good day, students. So welcome to part four of the Integrated Algebra Regents um, Review Problems for January 2014. In this installment, we are going to be going over problems 26 through 30. All right, let's take a look at problem number 26. It says, given um, set u, x such that uh, x is between 0 and 10, and x is an integer, and s um, equals x such that x is between 0 and 10, and x is an odd integer. The complement of set S within the universal set U is. So let's go ahead and um, write down all the elements of set U and set S, and then determine what the complement of um, set S um, within the universal set U is. All right. So um, set U basically uh, involves all the num all the integers between zero and ten. Um, so let's write out what they are. So for set U, the universal set U, we have, um, you don't include zero, okay? You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten is not included here, so do not include ten. All right? Uh, so these are the elements of the universal set. And then set S is all the integers between 0 and 10 that are what? Odd. Okay? So the, in that case, we're going to have 1, uh, 3, 5, 7, 9. All right? So what is the complement of set S? You can think of the complement of set S in U, S complement, as a set U minus the set S. All the elements in set U that are not in set S is a complement of set S, okay? So we can simply do a basic subtraction. We subtract set S from U, and then that answer will be our complement. Or you can think about it another way. If a number is not odd, it's what? It's even, right? So all the even numbers between 0 and 10 should be the complement of set S, all right? So... Um, S complement, which is set U, take away S, is basically going to be 2, 4, 6, 8. All right? These are all the elements in set U that are not in set S. That's what the complement um, of a set is. Okay? This uh, problem can also be um, represented using a uh, using a Venn diagram, I use this um, elements of a set here. So let's say this is a universal set U, okay? And then we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is set U, okay? So one of the subsets, the proper subset of U, is set S. So this right here is set S. <clears throat> this is set S right here. Okay. Set S is a subset of... Okay, I'm sorry. I got it backwards. Uh, set S is uh, right here. Set S is a set of um, odd numbers. Okay, so this is set S right here. All right, now, if this is set S using the Venn diagram, then set the complement of set S is basically everything in set U that's not in S. And this is it right here. Everything outside uh, set S. So this entire piece right here is the complement of set S. And we can see that 6, 2, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8 are elements of the complement of set S. Okay? So that's basically um, what uh, this problem is asking for. Now we can clearly see that our answer is letter or number 4, 2468. All right, let's move on to the next problem. For question 27, it says the roots of the equation 2x squared minus 8x equals 0 are. So finding the roots of a quadratic equation, in order to find that, all you have to do is factor 
it completely and set the factors equal to zero. Okay, so how can we factor this? Notice that this term, this expression has a greatest common factor of 2x. So we can factor out 2x and we are left with x minus x minus 4 equals 0. Then using the zero product property, we have 2x is equal to 0 and x minus 4 is equal to 0. Solve this by dividing both sides by uh, 2. You have x equals 0. And then this you add 4 to both sides. And you have x equals positive 4. So our um, roots are 0 and positive 4. But you can see that our answer is clearly option number 4. Another way to do this is you, um, you ask yourself which numbers you plug into this equation to get 0. Okay? And those will be the roots of your equation. All right, let's take a look at 28. It says, uh, which illustrates the multiplicative inverse property? So let's look at all these properties here. Um, there are two valid properties for multiplication, multiplication listed here. Um, this is not a valid property, neither is this. This property right here, a times one equals a, you end up with exactly what you started with. This is identical to what you started with. This is known as the identity property, identity, because you end up with something that is identical to what you started with, all right? And whatever element or whatever number that helps you get the um, identical output, that number is the known as the multiplicative identity, okay? So for multiplication, this illustrates that the multiplicative identity is one. Multiplicative, multiplicative identity. All right. And then guess what this is? This operation results in the identity. Okay. So whatever yields the identity is known as the inverse operation. So this right right here is the inverse property of multiplication because when you multiply this term by original element, you ended up with the identity, which is one. Multiplicative identity is one. So you know what this is called? This is called the multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverse. All right, these two are connected. The multiplicative inverse basically helps you find out what the multiplicative identity is. And this process also applies to addition. If you think about addition, a plus zero equals a, and a plus negative a equals zero. So what do you notice here? You notice that this zero shows up twice. In this context right here, this is the identity property. And the uh, additive identity is zero. And this right here is the inverse because you are generating the additive identity with this operation right here. Okay? So um, there, there you go. So the answer um, that we're looking for that illustrates the multiplicative inverse, which is the operation that generates the multiplicative identity, is option number three. Okay? All right, let's take a look at problem 29. It says, um, what is the result when 4x squared minus 17x plus 36 is subtracted from 2x squared minus 5x plus 25? So you have to be really careful with how you set up this problem. That's really, really important. Okay, so when this number is subtracted from this number, the way you write it is this number right here, this polynomial expression 2x squared minus 5x plus 25, it is this number that you're going to subtract this one from. Minus parenthesis 4x squared minus 17x plus 36. Now the mistake that most people make is since this number comes first, they put this on top and put this on the bottom. That's wrong. You're inverting the, the subtraction process. Okay? You know that subtraction does not come here, so the order is important here. All right, so since this is subtracted from that, you write this first, subtract it from this. Okay? And then this becomes 2x squared 
minus 5x plus 25. Now this is another mistake most people make. They forget to distribute this minus to all the terms. Okay, so you have to do that. So you have minus 4x squared plus 17x minus 36. Okay, now that we distributed the minus sign, we just simply add downwards and that should be our final answer. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and add downwards. We're going to have negative uh, 2x squared plus 12x minus 11. And we can clearly see that our answer is option number four. All right, let's take a look at the last problem, number 30. It says, uh, Julie has three children whose ages are consecutive of integers. If x represents the youngest child's age, which expression represents the sum of her children's ages? Okay, so let's start by declaring our variable. Um, let x um, equal to the youngest child's age. Youngest child's age. All right, so x represents the youngest child age. Now let's say um, you want to get the next odd number. Let's make some examples. So if we have an odd number four, uh, odd number um, five, what's the next odd number going to be? It's going to be five plus two, which is equal to seven, right? What's the next odd number? Seven plus two, which is equal to nine. So you skip around. You, you jump by twos when you're when counting odds and evens likewise, okay? So if the youngest child's uh, age is X, there are two other children, okay? The next one is going to be X plus two is going to be the second child's age. Second child, let's that again. Second child's age because they're consecutive, okay? And consecutive odds are two uh, units apart from each other. What is the third child's age? It's going to be x plus 2 plus another 2. So it's going to be x plus 2 plus 2. Okay? It's just like going from 5 to 7 to 9. From 5 to 9 you have to add 2 twice. Okay, so this would be the third uh, child's age. Third child's age. All right? So um, it says which expression represents the sum? So the sum of their ages just, sim just simply involves adding up all these numbers together. All right, so what is the sum of these numbers? X plus X plus X is 3X. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So we have 3X plus 6 as the sum of the three ages. But thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool clips such as this. And please post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation. And do give us a thumbs up if you liked it. We really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.